John's your average 20 something guy, I suppose. He's, um, he's very likable, he's witty, he's clever, he's very down to earth, whereas Alice is quite middle class. It would just be nice to be able to invite people over without being tense all evening. She calls him her Tesco, Tesco value range, which is one of her lines. I try and be a considerate boyfriend and you think... Who wants a little no relief? Nothing to do with that. Really? Right, whatever. Though we did watch Pretty Woman and you did say... Ha, I knew it. You are so transparent, Jonathan. I could use you for tracing paper. But it works. Their relationship works um, and has done until now. They've been together for four years um, and it's only now that it's it seems to have become stuck in a rut which they're trying to get out of. Yes, John supports Alice and, and is sort of there as, as a base for her to come back to. When she's off flying, she can come back and return to somebody who is always there. The fact that he is always there and he's not necessarily moving anywhere on his own is a source of frustration for her. I love John. He could have driven Mother Teresa to a one-finger salute last night, but I still love him. She wants to push him to be better, to, you know, to work harder, to, to get somewhere. Fantastic. John loves Alice and he is totally committed to her, but he is made to feel inadequate by her family. John doesn't get on particularly well with his mother-in-law, Margaret, but I guess a lot of guys who hear the audio will be uh, able to relate to that. Girls too, probably. Mum. I bet he's made you try it. No, he hasn't, Mum. He doesn't even smoke. I've had such dreams and visions for you, Alice. Alice's mother, Margaret, does not like John. He is not good enough for her little girl. But what she comes to the realisation of is that John does love her daughter, and that is worth an awful lot. And John loves you. I can see that. And that's enough. For now. We're not complacent, Margaret. We work for it. Oh, let's hope so. John wasn't originally a Geordie, and obviously I'm from County Durham, so it's nice to bring a different regional accent to the to the show. That's great. Um, not because anybody from Newcastle is generally one thing or the other, but there's just a very, very distinct difference between how he speaks and how Alice speaks. So for us, that's absolutely perfect. Um, there was a line in, in the script which had to be changed. Obviously, I wouldn't support West Ham, I'd support Newcastle, so that's in there now. And um, it also means that now we've got his voice in our head when we're writing him, we can incorporate the way he speaks, you know, the cadence of his sentences, that sort of thing, um, into what he's saying. I don't believe this. She's organised our herbs into alphabetical order, great anal. What kind of weird fruitcake does that? Brilliant, I'm happy with that. So that's that scene down. Uh, I know Dexter from Phantom Films through doing a Doctor Who convention with him. I played Jake Simmons in Doctor Who in three episodes from series two. It was Rise of the Cybermen and The Age of Steel, Cyberman two-parter. And then I came back later on in Doomsday. My first Phantom Films convention was a, a few months ago. Um, it was a lot of fun. Nice to, to meet the team and a lot of the fans who've come down. It's very enjoyable. I'm talking shit, I'm sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Fight for the Remote is available to download now on Audible and iTunes and is also available on fightfortheremote.co.uk. Cheers.